switching gears a little bit in terms of B2B digital marketing, you know, um, just a little bit of what my kind of topic is about. And it's really looking at, you know, the B2B space. Um, clearly, I work at 3M, as you can see in my presentation at the top, but it's a journey that we're experiencing, and a lot of organizations are experiencing this. So I kind of want to share a little bit about what that journey has been for us and what we've kind of accomplished. So before we get started, a little bit about me. First of all, where's Andrew? I want to know if that, that, that's, that's my LinkedIn profile. Does that work? <laughs> that's a picture, at least. So anyways, a um, little bit about me. I was born and raised in Saudi Arabia. I moved to, uh, moved to Canada in 2004, in Ontario, specifically London. Uh, I graduated from Fanshawe College and uh, married for four years. I have a young boy who's almost two, and he keeps me, on my, keeps me busy, as you can imagine. Um, but I've been working at 3M uh, for just about six years now, focused solely on digital marketing. So, switch gears. Let's jump into what I want to talk about today. So, I mean, I, like I said, it's a journey that I want to take you on in terms of what we've been experiencing. But these are a few topics that I want to cover on because these are topics that have resonated very, very well with us as an organization. So, target audience relevance, uh, digital tools, as well as disruptive technology. So... Before we do that, I'm just going to share with you what my business looks like. You know, 3M is a very, very complex organization, and I work in one business of many. So the business that I work in is personal safety. It's the personal safety division of 3M. So we manufacture and we sell safety products to different industries, you know, automotive, construction, oil and gas, mining, you name it, healthcare. And the products that we sell are from respirators, hearing protection, fall protection, um, um, head protection, face protection, you name it, eyewear. So the, the, the products that we sell seem pretty straightforward, but when you, when you take it from the approach of B2B, here's where it gets a little complex. Target audience. Who is truly our target audience when we're talking safety products? You know, within our space, or what we've, what we've been learning is that within the B2B space, it's the, the, cu the customer is changing. It's cha they're, they're changing every single day. And what we, what we knew in the past is completely different than today. So, for example, the customers are coming to the table a lot smarter than they have been. They're equipped with information. They're clearly doing their research ahead of time. They know the products that we're selling. They know our competitors. And when they want to purchase the product, they want to purchase it in real time. So, again... Taking a step back, we're a very, very traditional business. We manufacture and we sell the safety products to a distributor who then resells it to the customer. So where do you play in this space? Like, how do you figure out who, are, who your audience is, right? So this is, this is kind of what I like to look at, what, what I tell my marketers all the time is, who are you actually hollering at? Like, you know, in our space, we have three different target audiences that we're going after, not just one. It's not just the person who's wearing the respirator or wearing, you know, the harness or is working at height or working underground, we have three different audiences. So the first one is the purchaser, the one who's actually purchasing the product directly from the distributor. The distributor is the second target audience, so the one who's purchasing the product from us. And the third one is the sales rep, the one who's actually selling the product. So purchaser, distributor, sales rep. That's, those are the three target audiences that we're looking at. Now when you dive a bit deeper and you talk about relevance, so now we know who our target audience is, but how do you resonate with these people differently? And with digital marketing, it's, it's really about delivering, you know, tools or technology that, that's going to be relevant and resonate well with these audiences. And at the end of the day, we can't have specific plans focused on each one of these people. So what I always tell people is that it's not about, you know, whether, whether you're delivering it through web, through email, through social, how do you actually determine what's relevant to these people? And it really comes down to one thing. But before I jump into that, I'll, talk, I'll, talk, I'll give you a little example. So a sales rep, they may want a tool from us that can help them sell better or help them talk about the product in front of the customer. A distributor might want to get information from us quicker to promote the product, you know, to receive information in a digestible format so that they can you know, spread the message that, hey, 3M has this new product, so on and so forth. And then... A purchaser whose majority of the time is, is, you know, within our space, it's going to be an industrial hygienist, a safety manager, someone who's responsible for people's health and safety. And what they're usually looking for is 
you know, am I, I need to buy personal protective equipment that's going to make sure that my employees are comfortable while they're working and they're staying safe. So when you stop for a second and you look at it, and I mean, we kind of look at it from, from an organizational perspective is, what do all three of these people have in common? You know, safety products, a purchaser, a distributor, a sales rep, and even us as an organization. When you take a step back and you look at the core, and this is what I call the sweet spot, what is the sweet spot that we all have in common when it comes to safety, safety products? Is at the end of the day, we want to do two things. We want to reduce injuries, and we want to save lives. Because that, that's what it's all about. We want to make sure that they're getting the right protection they need so that you know, they don't fall from a building, or they don't, you know, they're not breathing in the wrong, the wrong um, gas or vapor or whatever it is, or they're not damaging their hearing long term. And that's the same thing, whether it's a distributor, whether it's us, whether it's a sales rep, um, it's, it's all the same. They all want to focus on that. So this changes, changes the perspective. Once you determine what that sweet spot is, you can then say, you know, what are the tools that I can use to determine that, you know, to, to have that shared message when I'm speaking to each of these people? And I'm usually speaking to them all at the same time. So 3M is a very complex company, as you can imagine. And, and traditionally what we've been doing is we've been, we've been going out the market in a very PhD format, tone of voice, if you will. Um, and what I mean by that is we speak to the safety world as if they have 30 years experience or 20 years experience or have been doing it for a really long time. And we expect them to know, you know what we're talking about. This is the challenge because what's happening now is we're experiencing it with the aging workforce is you're having to balance between the two. You know, you're having to balance between digital and traditional. So you can't just shift gears and go directly digital or, shift or, or stay completely traditional. So that's where it gets a little tricky. So this is where it comes down to, you know, what is the platform that you want to deliver? Digital tools versus web. Everyone wants the best website. Everyone wants to have the best website. You know, I talk to my marketers all the time. We're just going to have a killer website. We're going to drive to the website. They're going to do whatever it is they need to do. But the reality is in this day and age is you have to play in multiple spaces. A signal. Yeah, no worries. So you have to play in multiple spaces. At the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, how do you reach the audience or how do you play where they're going to expect you? So, for example, a purchaser might be looking for an app that can help them. Um, uh, a distributor might require an email. Send me something. Some, send me something that I can send to my customers to promote your product. Um, just trying to think of some other examples, but it's it, it it there's a lot of different w areas that you can play in digital marketing, especially from the B two B side. So it really comes down to how do you choose what the right what the right option is, and are we okay? Okay, perfect. So you know, it, 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 there's a lot of different tools, right? Like I said, there's a lot of different things you can do. You can play in social media, you can play in email. But it's really determining what you need to do. And there's a study now. There's a, there's a study that's, that's been proven that, you know, one thing that, that you can do, and this is, this is the unique thing that I tell, I tell my marketers all the time, is you still have the capability of leaving your desk, leaving where you sit every single day, and spending time with these people. And we lost signal again. And spending time with these people, talking to them, understanding what their needs are, what their requirements are. And the unique thing about this is, you know, the study talks about user, I um, can't remember what it, talk, what it is, but I think it's user, um, it's basically talking about if you spend time with, with these people, whether it's a distributor, whether it's a customer, you can start picking up on the similarities that they have or the needs and the wants that they have. And this actually allows you to help position your digital experience that you want to deliver. You can deliver that user experience that you want by understanding from them and hearing from them firsthand. Now, if you take it from the B2C side, you know, I go to Tim Hortons and I grab a coffee. You know, Tim Hortons is not going to sit in my car ride on the way there and say, so, how's the coffee taste? Is there anything we can do to make it better? Whereas in our space, you know, the person who's purchasing the product, we can go in and we can talk to them. You know, we can talk to the person who's actually wearing the product, say, is it comfortable? Is this making you feel better? You know, what, can, what else can we do? So you have the product side, but then you can, you can determine what are the tools that we can deliver digitally that can actually help them and, you know, Im improve their job. So just something to consider in that space. 
So it comes down to uh, disruptive technology. So like I said, we're a very, very traditional organization. Um, you know, I've spent a lot of time in the field with, with a lot of, our, with a lot of our, our reps, a lot of our customers. You know, earlier this year, I, I did about a two-week tour from Eastern to Western Canada, Central, talking to tons of customers and distributors. And, you know, even our own sales reps. And, and the one thing that you, you notice is we introduce tools or we introduce platforms that they can leverage, but they still carry around their big clunky catalog or they, kill, they still have brochures that they want to give to the customer. Where on the flip side, you see customers now saying, I don't want that brochure. Send me an email. Send me a but you, you have that balance, right? So what we did is we kind of took a different approach. And we said, you know, it's not changing as fast as we want, this whole digital traditional speed. So why don't we try something in terms of changing it ourselves? So what we did is we introduced a tool an app, essentially. And the tool is basically a, a product selector tool. We, re we realized that our, our sales reps are struggling to sell some of these products because they get very, very complex, let alone our distributors who sell our products. They have employees coming and going and coming and going. So training is very, very expensive. And at the end of the day, customers always want information about our products. They want to know what's the latest and greatest. Is there something that can help me improve productivity? Is there something that can help my, my employees be more comfortable on their, at their job. So we built this tool and we jammed all of our products in there. And it's an app. It's free to download on the App Store. And what this did, we introduced this, I think about a year and a half ago, at our largest trade show. 